Well, there are five key sales leadership drivers of motivation that we need to incorporate into our motivational toolbox. The first one is strong leadership. Second one is regular performance coaching. Third one, ongoing training and development. Fourth one, provision for professional growth opportunities. And the fifth one being provision for individualized recognition and rewards. So let's take each one in turn and look at them individually to see how we can use each one of them as a vehicle for driving motivation, for driving performance, for driving employee engagement. So number one, let's talk about leadership, strong leadership. Job exit surveys consistently suggest that job satisfaction is directly linked to the quality of the relationship that salespeople have with their sales manager or their sales leader. Now, the best sales leaders treat their salespeople more like business partners than employees. Let me repeat that. The best sales leaders treat their salespeople more like business partners than employees. Think about the ramifications of that. These sales leaders focus their attention and efforts on inspiring and empowering their salespeople to take responsibility rather than attempting to manage and control them. I mean, think about this. As long as you have to manage and control your salespeople, who's responsible? You are. And if you are responsible, then who has all the worries? You do. If you are responsible, who has to be motivated? You do. And if you are responsible, who has to constantly be pushing and driving? You do. So what are we saying? What we're saying is you need to learn how to transfer responsibility, to transfer ownership. That's critical to your success in your role as sales leader. Because if you are so busy managing somebody else's territory, if you are up at nights worrying about somebody else's territory, is it any wonder then that you don't have the time, you don't have the resources, you don't have the wherewithal to run an effective sales team? You're so busy worrying about each individual territory that you can't actually run the business. Transfer ownership of the territory, of the customer base to your salespeople. Let them own it. That will free you up to lead your team effectively. Why is it that just because you have manager written on your business card that now you have all the responsibility? If you take on all the responsibility, you should get paid. If you're doing all the work, you should get paid. If the sales territory is the sales representative's responsibility, then you must transfer ownership. You must transfer responsibility. You have to engage them as a partner not as an employee. If you were going into business partnership with someone, let's say a relative stranger, what would you do? No doubt the very first thing you'd do was to do some form of background checking to make sure that the person that you're going into partnership with was the real deal. This is called getting the right people on the bus. Secondly, you'd most likely set up the partnership rules and boundaries. Okay, question. How tight are the rules and boundaries that you have with your sales team right now? Thirdly, would you stand over your partner's shoulder and watch their every move? Or would you just expect your partner, once we've both agreed on what our various roles are, just to go out and do the job? So now, let's stop and take a good, honest, hard look at your relationship that you have with your current sales team. How many of your people do you manage versus how many of your people do you actually partner with? So as an exercise right now, just quickly list all the salespeople that you have responsibility for. And then just make a notation next to each one of their names as to whether you are either managing that person 
or whether you're in partnership with that person. And that will give us a really good solid base of current reality from which to work from so that you can start to make plans to transform that relationship from a managerial relationship over to one of partnership where they own their own results. Another key behavior you need to adopt as a sales leader is that you really need to work hard at creating relationships of trust and respect with your salespeople. You need to work really hard to create an environment of open communication and encouragement. Great sales leaders today lead their teams from the front. They're constantly aware that they are always setting an example, both positive and negative by their own behavior and attitude. Okay, so that's leadership. So now let's talk about performance coaching. And as we've already pointed out, sales performance coaching has proven to be a powerful sales production and motivational tool that you have in your arsenal as a sales leader. When you run effective one-on-one -on -one sales performance coaching, it not only creates awareness and purpose, but it also creates competence. In other words, it helps to build sales capability. You can build skills through your one-on-one -on -one coaching effort. Sales performance coaching, when you do it properly, enhances the trust and feeling of well-being, both from the coach as well as the salesperson. And this enhances individual motivation and engagement. So what we're saying here is as trust is increased, the sales performance coaching process supports the salesperson to achieve both their personal as well as their business goals. So this adds tremendously to individual motivation, which in turn enhances retention. The bottom line is sales performance coaching is one of the most powerful tools that you have in your arsenal as a sales leader to engage, to enroll, to grow, to develop, to give feedback and to provide a forum for discussion and to motivate your salespeople.